first part of this lecture, we had discussed what are the dyes and we have learned there dyes are the chemical substance or organic compounds which can impart the colors, uh, which can give the brilliant colors to the uh, fabrics and uh, that is that make a chemical bond to the fabric on which it being applied. And we have also seen the dyes contains uh, oxochromes and chromophores. So, chromophores are some unsaturated or conjugated groups due to which, which are the responsible for the colors. Similarly, oxochromes learners chromophores are com colored compounds always contain the chromophores and chromophores are nothing. These are the certain functional groups, these are the certain conjugated systems and the organic compound which contain chromophore are called chromogens. So, chromophores are responsible for the color which is given by any plant products or any synthetic compounds of dyes. Along with the chromophore, there are another groups we called it oxochromes. So, learners oxochromes are not responsible for the color. Always remember oxochromes are not responsible for the color, they can enhance the color. In presence of uh, oxochromes, uh, deepening of colors takes place and because oxochromes are electron donating group like NH2, NHR, hydroxy group, alkoxy groups. So, these due to presence of electron pair or non bonding electron pair on the uh, oxochromes, they can extend their conjugation to the chromophores, right. So, due to presence of oxochrome, deepening of colors takes place. Example, it is very important example, you can understand by this example, a benzene, benzene is a colorless, but when NO2 group is present on the benzene, which is act as a chromophore, it is a pale uh, color, but if along with the chrome of this NO2 group, if NH2 group is present over here, which act as a oxochrome, it intensify the colors from. So here, if this compound uh, amino nitrobenzene, deep yellow colors, the pale yellow colors convert into deep yellow color. So this oxochrome intensify the colors. Similarly. This is an, another example, there is a uh, chromophore which is N double bond N, azo group, azo group is a chromophore groups. Learners, here this along with the azo group, there is a NH2 group. So, due to presence of NH2 group, it intensify the color of this chromophore and we get a perfect orange color. Learners, one important thing in the previous part, I have told you about the chromophores. There are two types of chromophore. One is dependent chromophore, another is independent chromophore. Independent chromophore, just like azo group, azo group, nitroso group, these are the inter independent group, uh, chromophore. It means only one uh, group or one chromophore is sufficient to take out the colors, to bring out the colors, but if NH2 group is added to our hair, deepening of colors takes place. Along with similarly, another type of chromophore is uh, dependent chromophores. In dependent chromophores, when more than one chromophore is used to uh, make a color, to uh, we get a different types of colors, right. Example, I have told there carbon carbon double bond carbon double uh, carbonyl group, car carbon and uh, double bond and C, C double bond S. So, these are called dependent and independent chromophores. Learners, now how the chromophore works? Learners, chromophore can form salt either with basic or acidic solution. How can they form a solo, uh, f salt? Because chrome, uh, as I told you, oxochrome contain a lone pair of electrons. So, the presence of oxochrome convert a colored compound into dye which fix permanent to the fibers and due to the formation of chemical bond between fiber 
and oxochrome we get a deep colors right so importance of chromophore is the oxochrome is that oxochromes having a uh, non bonding electrons that non bonding electrons shared with the chromophore and extended its conjugation and due to that extended conjugation we get a resonance stabilization we get a resonance structure but learners uh, if the compounds contain weak chromophore there is a limitation of this theory or uh, uh, this oxochrome but this theory is not explained o and w theory is not explained for the compounds when there is a weak chromophore present so this is a limitations another very important theory that is quinault theory this is theory is called armstrong theory and armstrong in 1855 proposed this theory and according to this theory when any organic compounds or any dye which contain ortho para quinoid structure that ortho para quinoid structure it is responsible for the color of that compound of that dye of that chemical example as he i told you benzene benzene having no color no uh, chromophore or oxochrome so this is a colorless so what is the quinoid structure when benzene having two uh, attached with two oxygen atom right so in in ben this is all to also called benzo quinones right so in benzo quinone you can see there is a three pi bond inside the ring and two pi bond outside the ring so this quinoid structure this is the color responsible for the colors now but again this armstrong theory is fails to uh, explain if that oxygen which is bonded to the benzene ring replaced by any other groups like amino quinones and di amino quinones so these are having quinoid structure but are colorless so this it was a draw back of draw uh, back of uh, this armstrong theory both amino quinone and di amino quinone is colorless very important theory which explain the color and its constitution is modern theory what is modern theory it explains the color of compound organic compound organic materials or dyes on the basis of resonance effect right so and how the resonance takes place and it's a relation to the absorption of light resonance is associated with the absorption of light right when the photon falls on that particular compounds or particular dyes excitation of molecules takes place and what happened in the excitation of molecules the electrons excited transfer of electrons transfer of one electron from an orbital of lower energy to the orbital of higher energy level takes place that is sigma pi or non bonding electrons that are in lower energy states and higher energy states orbitals all the anti bonding orbitals so transfer of electrons by absorption of radiation uh, from lower energy states to higher energy states takes place and learners very important point is that no anti bonding orbitals associated with non bonding orbitals because they do not form bonds so this is a a uh, table uh, diagram you can see on your screen it's a uh, between molecular orbital and energy so all the non bonding uh, this is molecular orbitals pi bonding sigma bonding and lone pair or non bonding orbitals these are in lower energy states and all our anti bonding orbitals are higher energy states so when uh, these uh, absorption of light takes place the bond uh, excite after excitation the moly the electrons jumps from lower state to higher state and emits some radiation and due to that radiation we are able to see the colors so during the excitation of electrons absorption of uv and visible radiation takes place we called it electronic transitions so in simply in simple language we we in simply we can define during the absorption or during the excitation 
electronic transition takes place. These electronic transition can be non-bonding to sigma antibonding, non-bonding to pi antibonding or pi to pi antibonding and similarly sigma to sigma antibonding. But learners always remember because these are sigma and sigma, sigma is a antibonding orbitals. So, when electrons jump from sigma to sigma antibonding, it requires large amount of energy because the electrons are tightly bonding in this state, right. So, only saturated hydrocarbon can go such transitions, which transition sigma to sigma antibonding, right. So, transition do not takes place in UV light, it takes place only in visible light. So, the conjugated molecules due to presence of conjugated system, due to presence of pi electrons, delocalization takes place and delocalization causes stabilization in excited states and due to stabilization decreases of the delta E value. Delta E value is the energy required for excitation. So, due to this uh, delocalization, delta E value is uh, decreases and longer absorption of wavelength occur compound appear colors, right. So, here if the chromophore is weak or strong, as I told you in the previous two theory were failed because they were not able to explain if the chromophore is weak, right. But modern theory explain both if the chromophore is weak or string, uh, strong. So, the chromophore if the it is weak or strong and the oxochrome groups present in compound which is responsible for the deepening of colors by increasing the number of charge contributing structures during the resonance effect. So, as the increased conjugation delocalization shifts the absorption takes place towards the longer wavelength region that is in lower energy which is, which is called bathochromic shifts. So, always remember due to here bathochromic shifts takes place and increased conjugation absorption towards the longer wavelength region in the lower energy state that why the energy uh, required here is a uh, decreases decreased uh, delta e, e value is decreased over here. Hypsochromic shift in hypsochromic shift absorption toward lower wavelength but higher energy required here. So, it is important higher the resonance effect, lower the delta E value and deeper the color, right. So, deeper deepening of color takes place uh, on the basis of delta E value and resonance effect. Higher the resonance effect, lower the delta E value and deepening of the colors is a higher in that case. In this example, it is very important example, this is para amino azo benzene right. So, azo group is a chromophore over here. Now, amino group which is oxochrome here due to presence of ox this oxochrome because oxo as I told you oxochromes having a non-bonding electrons. So, that non-bonding electrons are contributing in resonating structure right. So, here in acidic medium the para amino azo benzene is a yellow in color, but in acidic medium it shows the violet color. So, how the violet color uh, we can get here? You can see the acidic medium in acidic medium uh, uh, absorption occurs at large wavelength, right. So, we you can see in the screen n each uh, and one n is uh, bonded with hydrogen. So, absorption occur at large wavelength and deepening of color is observed due to single charge contributing structure you can see on your screen right. So, this it was a single charge contributing structure which was the responsible for the deepening of colors. Another very important example you are looking on your screen three example one is nitrobenzene which is yellow in color, color uh, amino nitrobenzene para nitro we called it para, para nitro aniline. Uh, this is orange in color and picric acid, right. So, picric acid having 3 nitro group and 1 uh, OH group. So, picric acid is 
dark yellow color. So, always remember again deepening of color more deepening of color is associated with resonant effect more resonating uh, resonating uh, effect more reson uh, stabilizing takes place and we get a uh, deep color deepening of color takes place right. Now, learners what are the classification of dyes? How can we classify the dyes before using? How can we find out which dyes will be suitable for particular fabrics, particular products? So, we can classify dyes on the basis of their methods of applications. Number one, we have use on the basis of methods of application. So, on that basis, we use that dyes are used by the dyers based on the binding nature on the fiber and types of dyes because the dyes can bind to the fiber through covalent bond, through hydrogen bond or ionic bond or van der Waal forces. Another dyes which we can classify it on the basis of techniques employed for their applications. So, on the basis of their application, we can classify dyes into acetic dyes, basic dyes, wet dyes, modern dyes, azoic dyes, sulfur dyes, dispersed dyes, reactive dyes and direct dyes. So, all these dyes are classified on the basis of their applications used by the peoples who are associated in the color industry right or color business. Number one acidic dyes what are acidic dyes? Acidic dyes are the dyes in this acidic dyes we use the acidic medium and sodium salt of sulfonic acid and carbo carboxylic acid. Learn a very important point is that very important most of the dyes in most of the dyes we used any salt because salt having a very good affinity uh, to bind with water. So, what is the purpose of dyeing? What, how can we get the excellent dyes? Excellent dyes are the dyes which can uh, penetrate into the fibers, right? Our motive is that the dye should be fast, dye should be uh, brilliant color. If that dye penetrate directly into the fibers or we can say if that dye make a bond, a strong bond between the fibers. So, most of the dyes uh, if we use the salt that can be sodium salt also, Gabor salt also because salts are having a very good affinity to the water. Salt act as a catalyst, right? So, in acidic dyes, sodium salt of sulfonic acid and carboxylic acid use, these are water soluble anionic dyes and these dyes are used for dyeing animal fibers. Animal fibers means natural proteins, right? natural proteins uh, like wool right. So, along with the natural proteins we can uh, use to dye the synthetic fibers also like wool, like nylon, like silk, silk is a natural protein. Also uh, it is used to dye for paper, leather, ink jet printing the uh, in, we use the uh, ink which we use in the printer that are also dyes. Right. So, these are the dyes, the acidic dyes also used for paper, leather, inject printing, food and cosmetics also. Important example of acid dye is methyl orange, uh, Martius yellow, naphthol yellow as and picric acid. So, these are the uh, examples of acidic dyes. As a, this methyl orange is yellow in color, but because it, these acid dyes work in acidic media. When we dissolve this dye in acidic medium, the dye is converted into red, uh, red in colors. Another uh, classification dyes on the basis of their uh, application direct dyes. These dyes applied directly to the fiber, right. So, these dyes high affinity to the cellulose fiber especially cotton clothes, cotton textiles, they we can apply these directly to the cellulose fiber, can make a strong bond to the cellulose fiber because the uh, uh, cotton fibers, what cotton contains? Cont cotton contains the cellulose, 
right so that dyes can make a strong bond or have high affinity to the cellulose fibers these dyes contain acidic or basic oxochromes dyeing carried out as in presence of common salt salt dye or we, we that's why we called it salt dye or congo dye example important example of direct dye is marcius yellow so this is a uh, uh, another types of dyes we we are looking here in this structure one dye right and uh, cellulose fibers and for dyeing we have used any metals so that metals form a chelate with cellulose fibers and dye so dye metal form a dye metal complex and finally finally uh, metal fibers interaction takes place and dyes applied to the fiber of that uh, product that uh, textile so this is the structure of marcius yellow and uh, this is uh, stick to the fiber through hydrogen bonding and used to dye fabric directly similarly congo red congo red is also direct dye and it is also uh, make a hydrogen bond and we can apply it directly uh, on the fiber another dye is a basic dyes or cationic dyes cationic dyes contain basic groups right as you can see by the names basic dyes so this dye contain basic group that is nh2 nhr nr2 and some salt thin salt in the form of hydrochloride salts and this dye is used to dyeing fabrics of plant origins modified nylons and polyesters and some basic dye shows very important biological activities also and also used in medicine as antiseptics example chrysoidine malachite green and magenta these are the example of basic dyes so this is the chrysoidine is it is the structure of basic uh, io, uh, dye and you can see along with the azo group this is a chromophore and this dye have a basic group that is an a 2 nh2 group so this dye is uh, used for dyeing leather paper feather grass wood bamboo and etc another types of dye is wet dyes so wet dyes are insoluble in water and it is also applied directly on the fiber and this dye can use only on cotton not on silk and wool so just remember wet dye only can used only on cotton not for silk and wool and this dyes uh, this process is carried out in a large vessels the, we call wet that's why we called it wet dyes example indigo dyes indigo dyes and anthraquinone learner this is a indigo and uh, we call this neel in uh, locally uh, general language uh, we call this neel so this is a indigo and it is a wet dye and it is extracted from the plant greenish dark give the greenish dark blue color and learner it's a sustainable dye and the by products are biodegradable and it is non toxic dye so it is a structure of indigo indigo dye this indigo dye directly applied to the cotton fiber only another important dye uh, we can classify it on the basis of their application that is modern dyes or chrome dyes these dyes cannot used directly on the fiber no natural affinity to the fiber used with the help of salts and fibers are first treated with any mordant and uh, then any dye solutions right so uh, as i told you in the previous example the structure where we have to use any metal complexes so the chelating site to form stable coordination complexes with metal ion and metal salts which is called mordants right so different mordants developed various shades and superior Uh, color of dyes which is very fa shows a fastness very uh, uh, fast colors not faded on washing example na2cr2 so mean uh, uh, potassium chromate and uh, sodium dichromate potassium dichromate these are the commonly used mordants for wool so before dyeing the wool we have to we used 
these are the mordants uh, sodium dichromate or potassium dichromates example if uh, if we we are using any dye so we example i we have taken alizarin right alizarin is a as i told you in the uh, madar uh, uh, plant roots also contain alizarin so alizarin we you have to use mordant mordant is a na2cr207 or k2cr207 plus fabric and along with that we will use any metal ion suppose if we will we are using aluminum al3 we will get a red color if we will use iron fe3 plus we will get violet black colors right another types of dyes that is azoic dyes azoic dyes are also directly applied on the fiber and these dyes are insoluble in water and azoic as by the name you can understand azoic dyes contains n double bond and azo group in them so not found in ready made form we can produce these dyes are by dye azotization or coupling reactions coupling takes place and after the coupling we can get the azo azoic dyes so azoic azoic dyes uh, or we call the color we obtain from the azoic uh, dyes are called magic color or azoic color or ice color because after coupling the reaction color is produced within a few second and fastness is excellent so in many industries uh, many materials we use the azoic dyes because it's very uh, we get a color in few seconds right and the fastness is very excellent learners this is a orange color of azo dyes as here n double bond this is a azo group is uh, present in this azo dye and along with one oxochrome that is hydroxyl group so the color of it is used to uh, color the textile leather and food also learners uh, one important point you must remember there are certain azo dyes which are very harmful to our body to our skin even for animals uh, for our environment so uh, because it contains amines so many of dyes are banned in many european countries even in india also so azoic along with the uh, coloring uh, these dyes in the industry for of uh, textile pharmaceutical or food these uh, it has been found that these some of azo azoic dyes are used in my biomedical purpose another important dyes that is sulfur dyes sulfur dyes are most commonly used dyes very it is very cheap dyes in expensive and after good wash fastness we we have seen here uh, color is fastness and uh, we can get a variety of colors in sulfur dyes easy to apply very easy to apply predominantly the colors in sulfur dyes are brown black dark blue red and pink and all the sulfur dyes contain sulfur sulfur linkage in their molecules these the, the sulfur dyes are water insoluble and uh, uh, it is converted when we dissolve this dye into water it is converted into water soluble form which is called leuco forms like right? so before applying into the text onto the textile materials we have to dissolve this dye into water and that dye converted into leuco forms and after that leuco forms is uh, instantly bonded to the fibers and this dye is more profitable and valuable very valuable for cellulose fibers this is the example of sulfur dyes and we can see in the sulfur dyes there is a sulfur sulfur linkage by sulfide dye sulfide linkage so due to that linkage it is very uh, uh, quickly to uh, bonded to the textile bonded to the fiber and this is the chemical structure of dyes we can see here and this is uh, here we can see uh, on the cellulose fibers we can apply here on the nylon fiber on the polyamides or uh, 
polyesters we can apply this sulphide dyes and uses of sulphide dyes sulphide dyes are outstanding member of the family of sulfur blacks and uh, it dyes all cellulose fibers but particularly linen and jute so we have to apply these dye for cotton especially linen and jute and uh, it gives the lustrous and deep black with excellent wash and light fastness sulfur dyes are dyed from a dye bath containing sodium sulfide and common or gobber salts gobber salts are the sodium anhydrous salts and as i told you uh, the salts uh, act as a uh, catalyst uh, we when we use the salt uh, uh, in the dyes the reaction takes it uh, it provide the reaction uh, it uh, enhance the reaction it enhancing the colors process in it enhance it enhance the uh, binding of the dyes to the uh, fabric in a fast uh, manners right so the uh, gabler salts and some oxidized agent uh, sub maybe by airing or with some oxidizing agent like sodium bichromate or hydrogen hydrogen peroxide as to o2 we have to yes uh, used or add in the fresh bath before uh, using this sulfur dyes now mechanism of sulfur dyes how the sulfur dyes bind it to the fibers so you can see as i told you the sulfur dyes having s s linkage so because we have using here reducing agent that reducing agents converts the sulfur dyes into thiols right so smaller components of dyes which is soluble in water the thiols containing sh group are readily oxidized in the fibers to the original insoluble sulfur dye giving color and with with a very good washing fastness so this is a mechanism how sulfur dyes bind to the fabric now another very important is dispersed dye dispersed dyes also a synthetic dyes and it is used for polyesters nylon and uh, another uh, hydrophobic fibers and four molecules contain anthraquinone and azo groups enzyme example of dispersed dye is selitone selitone is a dispersed dye so this is the structure of uh, dispersed dye that is dispersed red dispersed blue dispersed violet and uh, here uh, this in all the structure you are uh, looking here one chromophore or one structure is quinone structure quinonoid structure right and uh, this is the uh, how we uh, use the uh, dispersed dye in dyeing process another last uh, dyes i would like to explain here reactive dyes reactive dyes form a permanent attachment to the fiber and it is not removed easily and the chromophores react with substrate to give fastness of the colors and it form a strong covalent bond with the cellulose fi fibers and alkaline condition required for the dyeing water soluble dye most permanent of all dyes types very cheap and we get a wide range of shades of colors in this uh, dye so today learners we have in this part we had discuss about the uh, uh, dyes and classifications of dyes how uh, dyes can be cl classified on the basis of their applications on the basis of their use and we have seen a, a lot of varieties of dyes like sulfur dyes are very important dyes and most of the manufacturer use that dyes nowadays in their factories thank you